Hey there. If you're watching this, you're looking to learn how to set up the lighting for your reptile. This video is targeted at bearded dragons, but many of these principles work for all reptiles. So we'll start with the sun. It's incredibly important to all life on earth and reptiles are no exception. Some reptiles cannot live without it, literally. Uh, this is what we're trying to replicate in captivity. So what is the sun? The sun is essentially ultraviolet light, heat, and visual light. These are the three things we need to supply our reptiles. For this very basic minimum setup, our ultraviolet light and our heat will act as the visual light. So let's stop here for a moment. This is not the best lighting setup. It's not even a good lighting setup. This is a bare minimum you need to keep your animal from getting sick. This is your base. In the next video, we'll get into how to build off of this by providing things like full spectrum lights, other lights that can beef up your UV, and other tiny details that will give your animal the best lighting you can. But this here is your bare minimum, it's your base. Now back to the video. So let's talk heat lights. We wanna use actual lights, incandescent or halogen. There's a ton of options out there. Here's some of the more popular ones you're going to run into, but there's a ton more that are perfectly fine. Um, this is not where we're going to get super picky about brands. Uh, in terms of wattages, it's going to vary a lot based on your situation. Uh, what we want to avoid is ceramic heat emitters, radiant heat panels, and deep heat projectors. Those have a place, but not for your basking surface. Uh, things that have no place at all is red lights and uh, these three-in-one mercury vapor bulbs. We're just going to avoid those entirely. Now let's talk about UV lights. Uh, this part's going to be pretty bearded dragon specific. What we want is T5HO lights. That's T5 is the diameter of the bulb and HO meaning high output. We don't want compact fluorescent or CFLs like you see here. And again, we don't want mercury vapor bulbs or MVBs. Uh, there is a Zoomed mega compact 65 watt that is strong enough for a bearded dragon, but the spread is not as good as a T5. And you really should do use that with a uh, solar meter 6.5, which is a, a pricey tool. Um, the brands that work without solar meters that we can just give you a measurement from the bulb to the animal would be Arcadia, Vivarium Electronics, Carolina Customs, and Reptasun. Uh, there is another T5 company out there called Leap Habitats, which make an excellent T5, uh, but they're really strong, and uh, ideally you would have a solar meter to work with one of those. Um, in regards to the strength, which bulb you're going to put in, that's going to depend on where you place this light exactly, whether in the cage, on top of the cage, what kind of screen your cage has, everything like that. And this brings us to light placement. There's a lot of ways to do it, but there's a few guiding principles we're gonna wanna follow. We want a gradient. So we want a warm basking side and a cool side. This way our animal can thermoregulate. They can regulate their own temperature as they see fit, as they would in the wild when they feel like they need to go under the heat and heat up and absorb UV, they can go over there, synthesize vitamins, get their metabolism going. And when they feel like that's enough, they can go over and hang out on the cool side and bring themselves back down. Uh, this is the basic concept of what we're trying to accomplish. So now we're going to look at how to orient these lights. And to do that, we're going to use this graphic here by Dr. Francis Baines, a pioneer and still leading expert on reptile lighting. Uh, you can see here we've got five different ways to orient them. These are not the only ways, but these ways are great. Uh, as long as we accomplish that idea of having heat and UV, a nice little patch of sun on one side of your tank, we should be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw what I would picture to be basking surfaces for a few of these. So on this first one here, this is what I would picture the platform, the basking surface to look like. On the next one down, I would picture it to look something like this. And the next one down, something like this. 
that gives you an idea that how you're going to orient your lights is going to be based on your basking platform, your black basking surface. You want the heat and the UV coming right down on that surface. So now let's talk about UV distance. We're looking for a UVI or ultraviolet index between three to five for a bearded dragon. So how that distance is gonna be calculated is based on a few different things. The fixture you're using and the bulb you're using. So we've got, we went through the fixtures. Uh, we have the Arcadia, the Vivarium Electronics, and the Carolina Customs. I'm just gonna to refer to those as Arcadia type fixtures from now. And then we've got the Reptisun. Then we've got a couple different types of bulbs. Uh, Reptisun has a 5.0 and Arcadia has a 6%, basically the same bulb. Uh, Reptisun has a 10.0 and Arcadia has a 12%, also basically the same bulb. So now let's say you've got an Arcadia type fixture with a 5.0 or 6% bulb in it. You're going to want the distance between that bulb, the bulb itself, and the animal's back to be 10 to 12 inches. Now let's say you've got that same bulb in a Reptisun fixture. You're going to want that distance to be 8 to 10 inches. Now let's say you've got the Arcadia type fixture with a 10.0 or 12% bulb. Now you're going to want that distance to be 16 to 20 inches. And with the Reptisun, it's going to be 12 to 16 inches. Now this is with the light being inside the enclosure, nothing between the light and the animal. If you'd like to put the light on top of the, the screen, that's going to block out a fair amount of the UV. So I'm just going to go over the most popular ones. We've got Dubia enclosures, Zens, and Symptoms. They all seem to have 45% blockage. So for the Arcadia fixture with a 12% bulb, you're going to need to be 10 to 14 inches between the bulb and the back of your animal. With the Reptisun, it's going to be 8 to 10 inches. If you're putting the light on top of the screen, I'm just not going to recommend you use 5.0 or 6% bulbs. It's just way too close. It's ridiculous. Now we can get to heat lights and their placement. As I mentioned earlier, we're not super concerned about brand here. It just needs to be an incandescent or halogen light that puts off heat. The majority of those reptile branded ones will work perfectly fine. Uh, you can place them inside the enclosure with one of these type fixtures. I tend to like the aimable ones if I go inside. Or you can put them on top with a dome fixture like you see here. I kind of prefer that. It makes for more usable space for the animal inside the enclosure. The wattage you need here is going to vary on a lot of little factors, but probably the biggest factors is the temperature of your house and how close you have the bulb to the basking spot. Obviously, the closer you are, the lower the wattage is gonna need to be. So distance is not a huge concern within reason. Obviously, you don't want the animal to be able to touch the, the bulb itself, but we're not gonna be using our tape measure anymore. Here, our main concern is temperatures. Uh, the first temperature we're gonna worry about is the temperature of the basking surface itself. And we're gonna measure that with an infrared thermometer gun, like you see here. So you're gonna to wanna to let your light heat up that surface for a good two to three hours before you take a reading on it. And you want that reading somewhere between 95 and 110. Uh, if you get around 103, that's a good area where you've got some wiggle room for any kind of temperature fluctuations. The next temperature you're gonna to wanna to worry about is your cold side air temperature. You're going to want to use a digital thermometer, not an analog one. Uh, use a digital one, like you see here, and you're going to place that on the opposite side of the enclosure of your basking area, about the height that your animal is going to be hanging out. And we want that reading between 77 and 82 degrees, somewhere around there. If you find that you hit your basking surface temps just fine, but your cool side is too low, then you may have to play with your heat light position a little bit. You can see here in these graphics, I'm going to move this around just to give you some ideas. And you may even just need to add a secondary lower wattage heat light uh, to boost the ambient temps just a little bit. The last temperature we're going to worry about, and I'm going to say this is basically an order of importance, so this is the last one, is 
going to be the air temperature on the hot side of the tank. So we're again, we're going to need the digital thermometer and we want that thermometer outside of the direct beam of the heat light. We don't want that heat light baking down on this thermometer. Ideally, you'd want that between 80 to 85. That's uh, kind of the ideal range. Um, this thermometer I mostly use as kind of a first warning that my basking temperatures might not be right. So if I walk up and I see that, that it's a really unusual temperature that it's not normally, I know to take out the infrared gun and double check the surface temp. So let me add here, you can use a dimmer to help you dial in your temperatures. There's all the way from these mechanical ones you can pick up at home improvement stores. They're like $10 a piece, all the way up to smart Wi-Fi dimmers like this one here. Uh, I want to add though, you want to dim as little as possible. So if you see that you're dimming up like near 20%, you might want to move to the next wattage down of bulb. Now you may be asking, well, what about nighttime? And for the majority of people, we're not going to do anything. Uh, you're just going to have your lights on a 12 hour on and off cycle. Uh, that's the simplest way to go. Some people follow seasons, but a 12, 12 cycle is completely fine. And our nighttime temperature drops are actually even good for the animal. Uh, if you are in the minority of people whose houses get below 60 degrees at night, you can get a ceramic heat emitter bulb. This is a bulb that makes no light at all, and you can put it on a simple on and off thermostat. But I'd set that thermostat to turn off at around 72 degrees. So that's it. In closing, I just want to say this may seem complicated and overwhelming, but I promise you this is the bare minimum just to keep your animal from getting sick. It's the minimum they need to digest food, create and absorb vitamins and minerals, and prevent horrible diseases like metabolic bone disease. Your lighting really should evolve from this point. We're seeing more and more evidence about full spectrum lighting being really beneficial, and there's other ways to fill out your UV spectrum, which is beneficial using different kinds of lights. This should really be your goal to have a happy animal and to give them the best care possible. So in future videos, we'll dive into ways to accomplish that and get into more depth on the hows and whys of the things that we had in this video. Uh, I do wanna thank Reptile Lighting Facebook group for the wealth of amazing and free information they have in their files. It's really the best place to start when you have questions about lighting. All the admins there are top in the field. If you have any questions for me directly about something you saw in the video, you can find me at Bearded Dragon Informations for Beginners Facebook group. And until then, happy herpeticulturing.